All right, guys, so this is going to be a video on rate equations, okay? This is from A Level Paper 2, June 2018, AQA exam board, all right? So it's going to be quite a quick video. Um, I picked this question because it's, you sort of have to do things backwards. So I'll hopefully ex explain myself here, but let's just jump into the question, all right? So if you want to pause the video, attempt it yourself, see where you go wrong, practice makes perfect in chemistry, all right? So bromate 5 ions and bromide ions react in acidic conditions according to the following equation, and we're given a nice equation here. A series of experiments was carried out at a given temperature. The results were used to deduce the rate equations for the reaction. Okay, so we're given a rate equation here, and we can just directly say what the orders of reactants are from this rate equation, which is why I said you sort of have to do things backwards, all right? So we have a nice data table here of all our uh, concentrations, all that good stuff. Use the data from experiment one to calculate a value for the rate constant K at this temperature and give its units, okay? And then we have to give our answer to an appropriate number of sig figs. So typical AQA here. Now, when we come on to question 5.2, when we have to complete the table, this is where things get a bit backwards, where you have to use the rate equation to work out the missing values here. Normally what you would do is you are not given the rate equation and you have to ultimately calculate everything and then lead to that forming a rate equation. But um, yeah, that's why things are a bit backwards here. But this first question right here, really easy, okay? They've told us <laughs> they've told us step by step what to do. We have to use this experiment, experiment one, to calculate K. So all that involves is a little bit of rearranging ability, okay? So if we have our rate equation right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite this and then just rearrange it, easy as that guy. So let's just rewrite that then. So rate equals, then we have our constant here, K, and then we're gonna have our bromate ions, then our bromide ion, then our proton, okay, H plus, and that's squared, okay? First order, first order, second order. So I'm actually gonna make a note of that right here. First order, first order, second order, okay? And we maybe will use that later, I'm not too sure yet. So if I rearrange this, all I have to do to get K on its own is just divide both sides by all three of these, okay? So all three of these are gonna to go to this side and just it's gonna be rate divided by all of these concentrations. Easy as that, okay? So K equals our rate divided by, and then all of this again, it's a bit long wind writing this all out. What I'm gonna do here actually, instead of just doing this, so I'd have to rewrite it all over again, I'm just gonna put all our variables in one time, okay? So 2.4 times 10 to the minus two is our rate. Okay, first off, we're gonna be having our um, concentration of bromate ions. So I'm actually gonna remove this square bracket because when you're doing calculations, you don't need the square brackets, okay? All you use that for is to denote concentration of a specific reactant, reagent, product, whatever we're dealing with. So in this case, it's just reactants, so I'm just gonna put that in, in round brackets here. So 0.1, easy peasy, let's go. Next one, bromide, 0.2, okay? Next one, 0.3, but we have to square that up because it's second order reactant, okay? Super easy question, okay? If you put this in your calculator, you should get 13.33 recurring, okay? So that's gonna be our answer for our rate constant K, okay? Now, appropriate number of significant figures. This is where you really have to pay attention to AQA. They like to see the lowest number of significant figures present in the data given. So here we can just straight away see that everything is to two sig figs. So I'm just gonna chuck our 13 as our K here, okay? Now units, units are pretty simple guys. So what I'm gonna do is actually create a separate fraction here just to explain units. If you guys understand units really well, feel free to skip ahead, not too complicated, okay? Now our rate, right? the units of rate are never going to change, essentially. It's always going to be a change in concentration per unit time. Therefore, our concentration unit is moles per decimeter cubed, and our unit time unit is gonna be per second. So as we can see here, it's gonna be concentration per second, okay? So our rate is just gonna be moles per decimeter cubed per second. All right, simple as that. Now, with our concentrations, these are all gonna be the same, but what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna add them up. Um, so we have mole per decimeter cubed to the four, okay? So 
mole per decimeter cubed. What I'm going to do here actually is make this two the same so we can easily cancel it out and then have this as moles per decimeter cubed cubed. Okay, hopefully that makes sense because one, two, three, four. Okay, just kept take into account the powers here. So if I uh, change up my color here and I cancel out the moles per decimeter cubed on the top and the bottom, we are left ultimately with moles per decimeter cubed cubed. Okay, now because it's over this, we have to reverse all the signs of the power. So ultimately on the bottom, if we if we transform this is going to be seconds on the top that hasn't been canceled because we have no time units on the bottom. And this is going to be moles cubed because we're cubing that. And then if we cube this per decimeter cubed here, it's just going to be decimeters to the minus nine. Okay, now what we can do here within units, you don't want your units to look like this. Ultimately, what you want to do is you want to take the bottom of the fraction to the top. So all you have to do here is just reverse the sign on the powers. So this is going to ultimately transform to mole to the minus three, okay, decimeters to the nine, because we're reversing the signs here per second, okay. Now, those of you that do maths or anything or a different example, you're going to look at this and be like, what the hell? That's just how our AQA likes to order it, okay? They like to have the change, the, the concentration value per unit time. Ultimately, you would, this doesn't really make sense because this is a, a negative power and then you've got a positive. It should always be of the positive power to begin with and then the remainders, okay? But AQA really likes to see it like this, so I'd, I'd advise just leaving it as concentration change per time, okay? Okay, guys, so K done, units done. Let's go on to filling out this table, okay? Now, the reason that I said is a bit backwards is probably going to become evident here, okay? So... When we're comparing experiment one and two, this is super easy, okay? Because we know it's first order, then these two stay exactly the same, okay? So from 0 0.2 to 0 0.2, 0 0.3 to 0 0.3, constants, okay? They are constants, so we don't need to take them into account when working out this new concentration here. And that's essentially what you always want to do. So say, for example, the 2022 paper, they chuck in one of these um, rate equation tables, you just want to look for the columns where the concentrations are constant, okay? And then you can use those ones to essentially ignore them from the rate equation. Um, hopefully that makes sense. But for this case, these two stay exactly the same. So all we have to do is say, okay, what has the initial rate of reaction changed by? So if you do this divided by this, it's just going to give us an increase of 1.5, okay? And because this is first order, this bromate ion is first order, that means that they are directly proportional. So this is just going to also get multiplied by 1.5. And you can just do that in your head right here, 0 0.15, okay? So that's our answer to two, uh, experiment two done already, okay? Now, if we cast our eyes down to experiment three and four, we have no constants here, okay? We're looking for this guy and we're looking for this guy. But we have no constants, so we can't just, it, it just makes it so much harder to do this and more time consuming, okay? efficiency in chemistry in terms of your time management is really important. So because they have given us the rate equation right here, what we can simply do is just plug in our values, rearrange the equation to make whatever we're looking for the subject, and it just makes it so much quicker, okay? So let's do experiment three first. I'm going to make a note of that here. Experiment three, okay? And we are looking for the rate of reaction. So we can actually leave this equation exactly the same, okay? And just use our k value that we got from the previous answer and put it into our equation, okay? So we're going to have rate equals, we're going to have our k constant. Now, I'm not going to si simplify it to 13. I'm going to leave it as our 13.33 just to make things a bit more accurate. I don't know if it's going to make a difference, but hey ho. So we're going to have our 13.33. This is going to be multiplied by our 0 0.2. Okay, 0 0.2 right here. Multiplied by our 0 0.4. And multiplied by our 0 0.5. Okay. Now, really important we take into account that it's second order, we have to square that value, okay? So, that's exactly what I'm gonna do in this in my calculator, easy peasy, just plug that in, and it's gonna give us an answer of 0 0.2666 recurring, okay? Now, would we just put that in this value here? No, we would not, okay? We want it to two significant figures, okay? So I'm just gonna run this up to be 0 0.27. So let's move on here to experiment four. Okay, experiment four is going to involve a little bit of rearranging because it's not just laid out as rate. We are looking for the concentration of H plus ions. So what I'm going to do here is just 
keep this value on its own, okay? I'm gonna take these, all these three to the other side. So we're gonna divide by all three of those. And then ultimately, because this is squared, we just have to square root both sides, okay? So if I write this out then, our concentration of H plus is going to be our rate, which they've given us to uh, 2.7 times 10 to the minus two, okay? Then we're gonna divide that by everything else, okay? So it's gonna be divided by our K, 13.33, times by our concentration of bromate, 0 0.1. Let's bracket these up just in case. You don't really have to, but I like to separate everything out when I'm uh, teaching stuff. And the next up is just, again, 0 0.1, okay? So easy as that, guys. Now, because we're looking for this and ultimately it was squared, we have to square root everything, okay? So plug that in your calculator and you should get an answer of 0 0.450. Okay, so two sig figs again, gonna be 0 0.45. So yeah, that's the end of the video. Hopefully it helped you guys out if you're revising on rate equations. If you did find it helpful, like the video, subscribe for future maths and science content. Best of luck in your exams, guys. Peace.